Yeah. And Garrett's got kings here. Garrett has kings. He made it 1,200. And he got three bet, I believe. From Haroon with queens. And JR is in there with kings. And did he put in the cold four bet here? Yep. Raise. Oh, we got 110. Three bet, cold four bet. JR had kings the last time he did a cold four bet. And JR's fairly deep. Cool. Yeah, Garrett's going to continue here with a call. And Haroon is so short. People got on him for folding queens, limp folding queens a couple weeks ago. He three bet, got cold four bet here by JR. And Garrett called. He only has 31,000 behind which will open the betting back up, which is interesting, because if he were to shove, JR, of course, could come over the top. And if JR did that, what would Garrett do to a six bet? There's the all-in. There's the five bet all-in. A five bet all-in here from Haroon. 33-8. So JR is 140,000. And there's the all in, there's the six bet. Is Garrett gonna fold? This is my question. Unbelievable. Raise, three bet, four bet call, five bet, and a six bet all in for 140,000. If there's ever a time to fold kings. This is 80. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So 140 all in. 100. 120. 184,000, 130,000 for Garrett to call. So getting just under one and a half to one, do you fold here? I mean, you got the two tightest players at the table putting all their money in. I think I fold. 139, 600. 139, 600. I mean, if you wanted to hand pick an example of folding King's preflop. Don't the purple play? Um, let's go here. 139, 7. Yeah. Garrett facing a six bet all in here. Great shot. Oh, I was playing my hand tricky, Justin. I have two red kings. Oh. Again, it's about 184, 130,000 for Garrett to call. Never seen Garrett fold kings on a live stream pre before. I've seen a lot of Garrett hands, but. I just can't. I, I, I think he might fold. And it's really all about JR's stack. JR looks like he's got aces or kings. And when you hold two kings, there's more combos aces. I don't know. I don't have a good enough reason not to put the money in here. But uh, I don't think I'm winning that often. Haroon, you have me beat plenty, too. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. And if you have me beat, it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not as devastating, you know? I just need to figure out if there's any way I can beat Justin. Again, this is a six bet all in. Raise preflop, three bet, cold four bet call. Five bet all in, six bet over the top all in. Usually we don't see this type of stack depth for this to even be possible for a six bet all in to be a significant. Just don't have a good enough reason not to. Oh, he is gonna call. He is gonna call, and I think this is a probably a best case scenario for him. I said I think we just tripled up Haroon. Oh, that's good for Garrett. Oh, you have Ace King? No, I have Kings. You have Kings? Oh. oh, that's devastating. You have kings? It's terrible. You have two black kings? It's so brutal. Well, one time. He doesn't have 
glad I didn't fold. One time. It's Who's got a diamond? No. Garrett's got the king of diamonds. Well, that's it. Unless a queen comes. So they're going to chop up Haroon's money. Oh, my God. What a ridiculous spot. Wow. That was crazy. That was one of the... weird result. Yeah. I'm, almost, I'm always going to either win or lose a lot of money there. Yeah. It's so weird. Oh. It's only because you flatted, so I felt like I had to. Yeah. What are you going to do, man? You got two kicks and a guy yeah. went all in in front of you. Yeah. You shove and you couldn't be happier about it. <laughs> oh, wow. Look at this. And Tiger just drills a full house. And Garrett has a combo draw here. So this is big line versus button. Garrett could actually make a straight flush here with the nine of spades. Tiger has just drilled the stone cold nuts here. 600 and a slow play with the call. And there's a spade. So Garrett's made a flush. Boy, we've seen Garrett make some big, big laydowns on this show when money goes in. And it will be interesting to see how Tiger's going to play this, if he's going to check race turn or check race river. Garrett's going to bet 2,200 here. There's also like a, a, a slight possibility when Garrett makes huge over bets on later streets that I could maybe even see Tiger calling being scared of overfulls here. We'll see how this one plays out. But 2200. Just a call. River is fairly inconsequential. And obviously Garrett here is going to bet for value. And the question is... What kind of sizing is he going to use? What did Tiger call with here on the flop? Maybe he's got some ace highs that hit that turn. And he is going to take that over bet sizing. So this is exactly what I was talking about. So is Tiger ever concerned of aces full or ace seven here? And from what I've seen from Garrett, if Tiger does check raise, I think Garrett's just going to almost snap fold from what we've seen with a sort of a lower flush. I mean, we've seen him make much bigger laydowns than this if he's faced with a decision here. Those green chips, of course, are 1Ks. The whites are hundreds. Grays are 500s. So Tiger just playing... Total. Playing with the 1Ks here. He's got about, you know, 18 to 20 in his hand. I think he's really trying to think, am I going to call? Am I going to raise? Let's see. Well, looks like he is going to raise here. 22. And he's going to min it, min click. Min click. So he min raises here from 11 to 22. So Garrett's going to be getting four to one coming back, just under four to one. Like I said, we've seen Garrett make huge laydowns, but you wonder if the price is going to get him here. Of course, Garrett loses to many higher flushes here as well. Some people in the live chat saying, "Will Tiger fold to a shove?" No way. Look at he's only got twenty six k back. That is definitely not an option. Oh. Yeah, the min click gets paid off. And I think that we probably can come to a consensus that if Tiger check jams there, I think Garrett's going to fold. Raise it up here by Garrett. 1,200, 9, 6 of spades. Julie going to make the call with King 10 off. Well, Garrett's got a flush draw. Julie has a king. <laughs> There's a laugh down the other end of the table. And is Garrett going to check raise here? He does. Very interesting line here. Is that right? Yep. Flops a flush draws the preflop raiser and chooses to check raise instead of C-bet. But Julie's not going anywhere. She's going to bet call with King-10. 
turn is a seven, which gives Garrett some extra outs here. Picks up a gutter to a five. Not something that you see that often, the, the check raise as the preflop raiser. And he's going to go almost full pot here. And you wonder if Garrett is getting a read here off of Julie. And she didn't three that pre. And if she's really pained here, is the best possible hand she could have like King Queen? And would he try to bluff her off that if he calls if she calls and he misses? But she might not continue though. Ten seconds. Down, so. And there it is. Like five, six, but. That is the power of image. Even though Garrett does not have a godlike image in this session, he's got an overall godlike image. And people just want to avoid him. Look at this. Ben here with kings. Garrett raises with seven, six of diamonds on the button. And we could definitely see a big one here because Garrett's going to be defending here 100%. What's at the stack up, there goes the, the call. Uh, Two hundred and eight thousand effective here to the flop, and Garrett drills it. Garrett flops the stone cold nuts versus an overpair, and Ben is going to check. He's got kings with the king of clubs. Going to play a little defensive, and how much can Garrett extract? How about pot? Just like, he was a little too, like, just like, he was a real queen. He was, like, all over the place. Why? I don't know. I just find the women. I like the women. And the best thing that can happen for Garrett here is a bunch of blanks. But we can definitely see a lot of action-killing cards here. 30,800. Turn is a three. That is a blank. Not the biggest blank, like a jack or queen, but... Not putting out any one-liners or flushes, so pretty good card here for Garrett. Garrett has the check mark now. And is he just going to go pot, pot, 1.5? Well, he's going to go over pot. So pot on the flop, slightly over pot now. And if Ben calls, we're going to be approaching 100,000. Whoa! Ben check folds. The turn, that is unbelievable. If people knew, if the players knew. Holy smokes, what a fold. And you could say it's an exploitable fold, but he was right. Dylan gonna go 1500 here with pocket threes out of the small blind and Ben has pocket eights and gonna call in the straddle. And how about quads for Ben? How about quads for Ben? And you always think what could happen here is if somehow Dylan finds a three on the turn. You expect a slow play, get bet into when you've got quads. 1100 in the call. Spade comes off here. Probably going to kill a fair amount of the action, but Ben might check it through if Dylan checks. Wow, Dylan looks like he's still going to bet here. 1,400. Maybe, he, uh, you know, the only thing I can think of is he thinks that Ben is calling with, like, ace high. I mean, this is a pretty thin value bet, but it's the only thing that makes sense that he thinks that Ben might have two over cards and a spade here. Certainly not a bluff, but Ben is going to slow play, so there is, again, a chance that a three could come. 
Well, River is an ace, and that's a terrible card for Dylan. I think specifically because some of those hands he was trying to get value from get paired up now. But I, I suppose once in a while you could maybe invent a call here if you thought that Ben had like king queen, queen jack with a spade, something like that. 7,000. You can see that Dylan has not snap folded yet. And he does call. He does call with 3-3. Three, three. Well, maybe Ben was polarized, maybe not, but certainly had the uh, top part of his range there. <laughs> Ben's going to raise it up here with Queen-9 of Diamonds. And Haroon nursing a $6,000 stack. Why not just put it in with sevens? He's going to call. Yeah, yeah. They were just like... He's going to call off like 20% of his stack. And we're going to see it four ways. Trying to get the hook up. Yeah. And Nick here has got the iron suited. He flops a flush draw. He's going to lead right out into the pre-flop razor. But Ben has a nine. He's going to call. And JR here has also called with the stiff ace of hearts. That's really surprising. And there's a heart. So now Nick makes the flush. JR overcalled with the stiff ace of hearts. And Ben trips up with trip nines. Action card here on the turn. And Nick has checked the flush. He led with the flush draw. He makes it. He checks it. And Ben makes trips. And JR, for some reason, stuck around on the flop. Now has the nut flush draw. I mean, is he planning on making a play here? Or what? 4,400. Cool. Well, he's going to call. And now it's over to Nick, who has the queen high flush. <laughs> and I don't know if Ben is in, like, a folding mood. He's made so many folds. What's going to happen if he gets check raised here after turning trip nines? Well, we're going to see. 12, Lead into the preflop raiser and now check raise the turn. Well, we've got him at 15-6. He says he's got 18, somewhere around there. Ben's going to put in a time chip. If it is about 15-6, if Ben calls, the pot will be right around 48. So, you know, Nick would have, like, less than a third of a pot that left. And then, of course, you got to worry about what is JR kicking around with that overcalled the flop and called the turn? Could he be sandbagging something? And Ben's going to fold again. No, no. Correctly. Thanks. Correctly. Pretty impressive oh, stop river, river. here from Ben. And the river will have rolled off the fourth heart. JR would have gotten there. <laughs> Crazy. River, river the nuts. <laughs> Crazy. If ben calls, like, I call. Hey, for a second, he left. Well, he probably thought the game was too good for him. I mean, he says he likes a soft game, right? Watch him do for Haroon here opens for a raise with ace, nine of clubs. Dylan just going to call with queen, jack of hearts. Definitely a three bettable hand, but this could be a function of the stack size. You can see how short Haroon is. Julie's at four. She's hit a few sets here tonight. Ooh, and we could see some action here. 10 9 9. So Haroon with trips and Dylan over cards and a straight draw here with Queen Jack. It said they do what? Eat your stomach lining. 
see how Dylan's going to play it. Looks like he's just going to call. We deal with epilepsy. Epilepsy, not. And there's the eight, and Dylan's got a straight against ace nine, and Karim checks here. I imagine that this is going to go bet, check, raise, all in, call. Yeah, there's the bet. I, I, I just can't see how Harun is not going to get it in here. He just called. He's got 11,000 left. Wow. And the river is an eight, and the nine fills. And if he checks, you've got to think Dylan might value bet, but he leads instead. He's going to bet 3,000 here. Pretty interesting one, like a block bet. But Dylan loses to any nine or any eight here. I think... Oh, he's still going to raise. Well, he's going to value own himself. Value own himself there with the straight. Yep. And by the way, I wanted to mention too, great PLO action here at the Hustler. I think there's a 5-5 game. They're putting down a 5-10 game. I know the hosts here, Jesse and Trisha, great people. If you like to play live PLO, come on down to the Hustler. Raise it up here by Garrett, Queen-9. Julie just calling with Ace-Queen here. Interesting flop. And Garrett takes a card. Oh, my God. Ace-Queen versus Queen-9. Julie's not that deep. What a crazy turn. And who would think that Julie had Ace-Queen? Oh, this is crazy. How does he not double Julie up? Check, check on the flop and a king on the turn. And she's looking. And yeah, Julie, you got the nuts. And he's got queen nine. All in. All in. It doesn't matter. Wow. Ship that 84,000 over to Julie. Unbelievable. <laughs> 2,000 straddle here from Tiger as we rolling into the last few hands here of the night. JR going to raise it up to 6,000 with Ace-9 off. Garrett going to get in there with 7-5 of hearts. Tiger, 7-6 of spades. He's, he's going to complete as well. Have you ever won a pop that big before? No, never. So 18,100. Remember that day like I stacked you three times to pop that big? What are you talking about? Did you, did you hallucinate this day? You bought it for 20. 20, 20. So both Garrett and Tiger really with middle pair. JR are going to see bet, though. And it was that much. I think that's probably going to anyway. force Garrett out. Let's see. Backdoor heart draw. No, he's going to come in. He does not have a backdoor heart draw. He calls. And now Tiger here with the 7 6 with backdoor spades. He is also going to call. No respect for JR. First time he's probably. Continuation bet bluff the entire night and gets two calls with middle pair. That's a pretty good barrel card if he could barrel again. Can he? No, he just quickly checks. He could have picked up a 42k pot. Obviously, we can see the cards here. Disconnected high card. Great for the preflop razor to double barrel. Got checked over to Garrett, and looks like Garrett is going to start a bluff here. Yep, he's going to start a bluff here with a seven. He thinks he's got to get somebody out of a jet off of a jack, and he gets Tiger to fold the other seven. Well played there by Garrett, picking up on the situation. We'll get all the stats up here. Take a look at the V pips. Garrett at 42, Dylan 39. Nick definitely played the most hands. Julie pulling up the rear. At 24, Ben in the middle. And we'll take a look here at 
the pre-flop raise. Garrett, by far the most aggressive player. And there's the stat everybody's looking for. Dylan the Villain. Dylan the Villain up 129,100 and a tough night for Garrett. Pulling up the rear, 139.9. And JR with a nice win for the new guy, 68. And Julie coolering Garrett, 42,400.